final leg of my two and a half thousand mile trek around the UK takes me to Pembrokeshire and the beautiful Welsh coast. I get the whole family involved for the final stretch. But that's the way we like it, isn't it? Yeah. Burgers and homemade camper van chutney. Wow, that's massive. I reveal how to make the best cordial out of foraged flowers. But just five miles from the finish line, I face my biggest disaster yet. What do you reckon? Uh, truck. I have to be on a truck. Today, I continue my camper van adventure in Wales. I'm heading west to the amazing Atlantic coast and the beautiful county of Pembrokeshire. I made it to Pembrokeshire, the last leg of my journey, and I'm really, really excited because tomorrow I'm going to be joined by my wife and the kids. And what better place to celebrate the end of my journey with them than the beautiful western tip of Wales and the Pembrokeshire National Park, which covers an incredible 258 miles of gorgeous coastline. And as my family tend to be my harshest critics, the pressure was on to make my last meal on the road my best yet. So I hurried off to seek out some local produce. I don't know this area very well, so I don't know what's in season. And I'm going to meet a local forager, Julia, who's going to show me where everything is. As always, having an expert on hand was key to both safe and legal foraging. Julia Horton Powdrill runs a farm shop in the village of Wolfcastle and has also set up a local annual food festival. I couldn't have been in safer hands. I've got this idea that I want to make a cordial for my kids. They're coming down to meet me tomorrow and I wanted to, I'm making them a meal. I wanted to make them something really special because they love going out in the woods and they would love something like an elderflower cordial. I was wondering whether or not there might be any around. Oh, you're going to be out of luck. It's all over. Elderflower's all over because now it's turning into berries. You're just, you've missed it by days almost. And we're too and early had, for berries. Uh, too early for berries, okay. so you can't do that. Um, but you could use meadow sweet, which is kind of similar, and it makes cordial very similar to elderflower. You can use the same ingredients. The other ingredients are all the same. Great. So you'll be able to take me out, yeah. show me where to find the meadow sweet, show me what it looks Absolutely. like, Absolutely. and show me how to make the cordial. Yeah. So you don't make a mistake and pick the wrong thing. <laughs> So elderflowers were off the menu, but meadowsweet flowers sounded intriguing. And as I'd never actually picked any before, I was glad I'd got Julia to help me spot them. But before we could even get going, we hit a problem. Oh, looks like the dodgy gearbox had struck again. <laughs> it's a bit temperamental, this, the gearbox. Oh, I drive a, oh, I try, actually, drive a clapped out Land Rover, so I'm kind of used to stuff like that. Oh, dear me. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Success at last. <laughs> meadow sweet is a wildflower that grows in damp meadows and hedgerows and flowers between June and early September. It is also known as queen of the meadow, mead sweet, and even the rather unappetizing bridewort. This looks like some here, look, just a tiny amount. Just, just on, there on the right. right. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's go and have a look, shall we? <laughs> This has all been cut. Look, this is all, this is all meadow sweet. All these leaves here, it's been trimmed, and these are just bits that have got missed. Look, and it's um, so it's not a, it's not a very bright so specimen. So what, what is do it? we need to take? Just the flower? You only be, and we can keep the whole thing, but you'd only be using the white bit, the creamy bit. Okay. There's a bit more here and a bit more there, but there's nothing nowhere near enough. So we should take what we can. Yes. This was not a good start. All the meadow sweet in Julia's usual spots had been cleared away by the hedge trimmers. My cordial plans might have been squashed. What a shame. So having to abandon my plans for elderflower cordial, it's starting to look like meadow sweet might be off the menu as well. Down here on the left is a place where there should be quite a bit of meadow sweet, I think, in a meadow near the river here. Okay, so I should pull over, shall I? I think you pull can over apart? pull over there. With time running out, there was one last place to look. There's some little bits just there. Oh, wow. That's much better, isn't it? This look. is more like it. Makes those other bits look a bit monkey. I know. <laughs> oh, fantastic. They look great, don't they? And Do they smell? They smell gorgeous. 
It's just kind of very gentle and fragrant, isn't it? It's isn't quite, it? it smells a bit baby powderish. Yes. Do you think it's that sort of yeah. powdery, sweet smell? So how much of this are we going to need? We need... To make a, a little bit of cordial. Oh, that full, I guess, actually. OK. So you're talking about taking just the heads off. So we're going to need quite a bit. Of course, you can't just pick any wildflowers. So Julia made sure we got permission, which is the number one rule for foraging. It's kind of really nice and therapeutic, isn't it? It is, plants. actually. I think that's the whole thing about... Another thing about foraging, really, is actually it's therapeutic, because you can think about other things as you go along as well. I know what I was thinking about. Where to get some meat for the homemade burgers I was planning to cook to go with a cordial. But enough daydreaming. Back to the meadow suite. And after a fair bit of foraging in the flowers, my bowl was looking pretty full. Time to head back. Right then, Julia, that looks like a fantastic crop. I can see a few, a few bugs. They're coming to the surface, aren't they, now? Um, that's fine. Just let them crawl up the side and you can flick them off the edge. But it's, it is a good haul, considering we didn't find any anywhere we else. We thought we were <laughs> going to be a bit lost. So what do I now need to do with this? Water, sugar, citric acid. And that's it, really. So right. It's just an hour soaking and then you, then you sieve it, then you boil it up again, put the sugar in. I mean, I, you can't go wrong. <laughs> it looks wonderful. Let looks me know wonderful. how it goes. It smells great. It smell and um, this will be the perfect foraged accompaniment for my camper van burgers, which I'm looking forward to making Fantastic. for them tomorrow. When are you making those? Tomorrow. Have you got beef for it yet? I haven't. Well, I was hoping to pick some up. <gasps> You have some we've here. Got some, we've got some, we've got some, <laughs> yes. We've got some from the farmer called Di Morgan who lives just on the hill opposite, so you actually couldn't get any closer than that. Oh, great. Fabulous. So local Welsh fresh black beef. beef. Welsh, black yeah, beef. Welsh black beef. Great stuff. So after a wobbly start, it seemed that things were finally starting to look up. I left Julia's with more than I'd bargained for, meadow sweet and local beef for tomorrow's burger feast. Well, I thought I was going to be making elderflower cordial, which is great, but I'm going to end up making meadow sweet cordial, which could be even better. I love the fact that when you go out and spend time with people who understand the country and who know the country, know what's in season, what's available, and also what you can cook with it, because it always throws up unexpected surprises. Time to head to my campsite to get this meadow sweet on the brew. From the look of it, a family day at the beach was definitely on the cards tomorrow. And the surfer in me was liking the look of those waves. This would do nicely. An amazing camping spot overlooking the incredible Carfi Bay. There you go, what do you think of that? Pretty good, I'd say. With my campsite penthouse sorted, it was time to set up shop and make a start on the cordial. After getting rid of as many stalks and bugs as I could, it was into the pot, with just enough water for a good soaking. I brought it up to the boil, adding the zest of a couple of lemons and then the juice. There was still sugar to be added, but first I needed to leave it to cool and infuse. The perfect opportunity then to have a bit of an explore. So whilst my meadow sweet cordial ferments or brews or cools or whatever it needs to do to get that magic thing happening, I'm going to take a little wander around. I'd spotted a shop on my way into the campsite selling local cheese. It sounded like it might be just the thing to go on the burgers I was planning for tomorrow. This looks interesting. Hello. Hi, hello. How are you? All right, I was just passing, I thought I'd pop in. Is this made here? It is. It is? Yes. Oh, yeah. wow. Organically produced on our farm. It is, yep. Yeah. And yeah. so this, is this cheese has probably travelled how far? A couple of hundred yards in its life? Yes, yeah, <laughs> from, from the cow sort of a, a field away, yeah. That's great. Yards. My eyes were soon drawn to a large chunk of cheese. So this is the cheddar, mature cheddar, eight months? Yes, yeah. OK, I love cheddar, so... Um... OK. <laughs> Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? It, it should have Quite a bit strong. of a tang. Mm. Is it? That's, uh, that's what I'm aiming for, anyway. That's given me an idea. I'll take a big chunk of that, please. Oh, there you go. What a stroke of luck. I've got myself some mature 
organic Welsh cheddar, and that gives me an idea for the quintessential Welsh snack. With this lovely local cheese, I decided to whip up a Welsh rarebit for my tea tonight. Well, I was in Wales after all. It's quick and simple, which would give me time to put the finishing touches to my cordial. Right then, so now it's time to strain the meadow sweet. I've never done this before, so uh, I really hope it works. I don't carry a muslin in my camper, but hopefully this tea towel would do the trick. <laughs> you know what? I can remember my old, my granny doing this. <laughs> She'd be very proud of me now because I at least remembered some of the basic principles. <laughs> now I just needed to put it back on the hob and add the sugar. Look out for some hyper kids tomorrow. The final ingredient was a dash of citric acid from Julia's shop. And leave it to cool overnight. As I had never used Meadowsweet before, it would be an agonising wait until the morning to see if my experiment had been a success. Luckily, my dinner tonight was going to be something I'm altogether more familiar with. Welsh rarebit is incredibly simple to make. First off, I mixed up the mustard powder, water and a spoon or two of butter. A pinch of salt. Next thing, a good dash of Worcester sauce. With a pinch of cayenne for a little kick, it was time for the star of the meal. Some local cheddar cheese made from local milk produced by local cows made by local people and very fine it is too so whilst you might want to save space by bringing your handy little grater there are times when you wish that you'd pack the big one as well especially when you're grating six ounces of the finest organic Welsh cheddar. Next and most important part of this recipe varies from recipe to recipe. The one that I'm going for, naturally, is the one with Welsh ale. Now, this is particularly fine light ale from the Gwarn Valley. Two tablespoons of that. In they go. Which is just as well, because uh, there's some left. With the cheese done and the bread cut for my toast, I thought I was just about ready. So that's pretty much it, really. Um, it's a really easy recipe, but if you are going to do cheese on toast and you do happen to find yourself in Wales with some really fine Welsh cheese and some great Welsh beer, do it properly. Once my cheesy topping was spread on, I whacked it under the grill. I was treated to one of the finest sights a hungry camper vanner can see. Oh, look at that. A final twist of pepper and it was all done. Welsh rarebit a la camper van. Oh. Do you know what? It's quite nice to have a bit of peace and quiet because tomorrow, when the kids arrive, there's going to be a whole different scene. But for now, I was quite happy just to sit back and admire the view. I've had worse days. Coming up, my camper van adventure is coming to an end. <laughs> How are you doing? But not before my family arrived to lend a hand. Get your hands in there and mix it all up. But could it be the end of the road sooner than I thought? With my